Howdy folks, uh, so this is a really important recording if it comes to weight loss being important to you and doing it in the right way, looking at behavior ele elements to that and just really um, a, a very much a foolproof approach to doing it um, that isn't all about deprivation. I've put together a very handy bunch of slides which I think you're all going to find really useful. It's going to be short and sweet. Um, so settle in for the next 20 to 30 minutes, maybe get yourself a nice green tea um, and just make sure you're in a focused zone to try and absorb everything. So I'm going to share my screen with you now. Um, and get it on to a, a PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to take you from the beginning. All right, perfect. So performance trainer unlock your potential this is my why it's to help people unlock their potential through training the mind um the body and the soul so today we're specifically focusing in on the apple quadrant there which is nutrition um, and we're going to talk more about that at this point i do want to mention that the reason that i have this approach is that i believe that health and well-being is a holistic thing that it is not by one element alone that you achieve, um, let's say, good health. Um, so it is for that reason that that I branch into lots of different areas like nutrition, like exercise, like sleep. And it's probably a good point to mention um, that before undertaking big change to nutrition, it can be advisable to check in with a medical health care uh, professional. Um, to make sure everything's okay on that front if you're making changes and if at any point you know you're feeling uh, low energy or a little bit dizzy or anything like that then um it's it's probably the case that we need to get your blood sugars back up so it would mean um just as well um you know being quite logical about this and if something's not feeling right to make sure that you change it and you um get the attention required okay so um also an important thing to remember and i've wrote, written this down i've taken it from a peak performance module that i am um, from from ron friedman um, which i've done myself and it was just an interesting stat because things are connected and i think that's why it's good to talk about that uh, this on this slide so research has shown that people who sleep six hours a night are 23 percent more likely to be obese um than those who are getting you know the, the recommended amount of sleep per night um you'd often hear that 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 rate would be between seven and nine hours again depending on the person uh five hours is 50 percent more likely so there is definitely a link here between uh, sleep and um, weight loss and being aware of that is important because that means you can make an effort to prioritize your sleep um to get a good sleep and also to realize that getting good sleep helps keep your willpower quite high on a daily basis. So branching from that now into the more nutritional um, piece, we're gonna talk about the law of thermodynamics, right? Sounds super uh, geeky, but simply put, what that means is that if you are eating um, less calories than you are expending, you will lose weight. So our body, even if we were just seated for the whole day, burns energy just because we need to burn energy for our internal organs to function, for our body to work, even when we're at rest. Um, and then obviously, the more active we are, the more calories we'll burn. Um, if we're consuming less calories through food than we're expending on a daily basis, you are in what's called a calorie deficit and you will lose weight. Um, Dr. Hobb here uh, experimented with the Twinkie diet, became famously known as the Twinkie diet. So he was predominantly eating um, a couple of, of these very highly processed sugary foods, Twinkies, um, Oreos were included, some sweet cereals. And then I think for just uh, a little bit of his own health, he was allowed one multivitamin a day and a protein shake. So he went from being, um, his maintenance calories would have been 2,600 and he went down to 1,800 on all of these sweet snacks. 
Um, and he lost 12 kg over a 10 week period. I am not promoting this by any means because there would definitely be other effects from, from the type of food that you're eating. So this is not the ideal model, but it does uh, manifest that if you are eating, no matter what you are eating, the content um, less uh, calories than you're expending through exercise and daily living, you will lose weight. Now, two of the best ways that I recommend to do this, bring me on to the slides that follow. Um, it's very important to track your calories. All right. My fitness pal, this was David Kelly, one of uh, my online clients in Ireland who started playing around with my fitness pal and finding it very useful. Um, so I'm, I'm very happy to see, and that he's not the only one, so I'm really happy to see um, the efforts being made on that. Um, what's good about this is you start to become aware. So for example, you might know, have known you know, how many calories you're in a banana until you actually go and search for it and then put it into your food log. So, and actually the orange there is a great example because that we could actually eat three small oranges uh, and we would, we would be taking in a very similar amount of calories to a small glass of orange juice. And people do not realize this. What we do when we squeeze oranges into orange juice format, and sometimes it takes two or three to get a glass of juice, um, we're taking all the pulp and the fiber out of it, which is obviously good for our system, for flushing out our system, keeping us regular, our bowel movements regular. And it's the same amount of calories as three oranges. So an easy win for calories there would be just to have one orange a day uh, in, the, in the morning if you're religiously taking this big glass of juice. Okay? And it's only when we start tracking these things that we, we become aware of it. Now, there's two ways of going about um, cutting calories that I think can be really effective. Um, number one would be to actually cut down your portion sizes completely. A great example of how you can do this is to eat more mindfully, um, which I will, I will touch on um, on the, the next slide. The other way would be to actually have a specific plan. Now, a plan that I think is, is very good to adhere to is having two meals a day that are high protein and higher fat, so very little carbs, and making sure we're getting some good fats in there. So from things like olives, olive oil, um, avocados, um, fat is not uh, bad, trans fats are what we want to avoid. So that's your, your deep fried foods, your donuts, your pastries, things like that. Then the other meal would be a high carb meal. I recommend leaving it till the evening because it's nice to have them, I suppose, to look forward to it in a way. Um, uh, and as I say, willpower gets harder throughout the day. So it could be maybe easier to put that back to later in the day. And that would be, you know, potatoes, sweet potatoes, brown or white rice. And remember that with brown or white rice, the calories are very similar. All that differs is your fiber content, which is better in whole wheat rice, the brown rice. Um, okay, so so that's that's one I would recommend, particularly as people get older. Uh, protein has a very close link to muscle repair and maintenance. And as we get older, a process that it could be getting into your kind of late thirties, early forties onwards. Um, a thing called muscle wastage happens, whereby our muscles uh, naturally start um, to decline, and we can fight this process by taking in more protein uh, proportionately compared to to um, fat and carbohydrate. So that's one way of going about it. The other way is to eat more mindfully. Now, um, eat more mindfully and control portion sizes. They're closely linked and it's very apt that there is the green tea in the top corner there. So what I recommend to people is that they um, eat 75% of what they usually would eat and then have a green tea. Firstly, on that 75%, I would recommend that you also slow down the rate at which you chew uh, your food um, and also to, um, to actually finish swallowing before you're already starting on that next mouthful. I know this sounds like really basic stuff, but if you get it right, it can have a huge difference. Another way of slowing yourself down is to have a little glass of water with you and stop every couple of bites for um, for a sip of water and just to generally engage in conversation if you're having your meals with others. And 
yeah, so that's that's another great way of cutting your calories down. A couple of other ways you can practice mindful eating would be to have a meal on your own a week. Um, so that could be just to really savor all the different flavors in your plate and completely give appreciation wholly to the food and practice your mindfulness techniques like chewing more, uh, you know, swallowing before starting the next mouthful, etc. At family time, you know, religiously people would say, uh, sometimes say grace to thank God for the, the wonderful meal and the fact that their family are around. It doesn't have to be. Um, a, a religious thing it could just be to thank whoever's made the food to be aware of all the different hands that it takes to get food from farm to fork and just to be thankful for that um yeah and and even heard one that i thought was interesting is just to maybe have a quiet time at the start of the meal whereby everyone just savors the meal and then after th three or four minutes just to start chatting um, with each other and in the bottom corner then we have a gentleman um, you know, on a phone, reading an email, eating and drinking wine at the same time. This is obviously not going to be good for your digestive system. You're very stimulated. It's it's very hard to concentrate on four things at once. Um, so that's to be avoided. Okay, so this is an example of a large latte from Starbucks. That is 250 calories a day. Again, this comes from tracking cleverly. So imagine if you cut that out Monday to Friday. Okay, and you, by the way, there is alternatives, low calorie alternatives, and Americano is extremely low in calories, and matcha tea as well. And they would also have a little bit of caffeine in it if it's a case that you don't want to give up on getting a bit of a caf caffeine kick in the morning. That equates to 1,250 calories uh, over the week, the weekdays. That is actually more than a tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. Um, so what I'm trying to get across to you here is accumulatively, the decisions that we make on a daily basis are very important. Um, so have a think about the wins that you could get out of making those daily changes, um, because in the long run, that can make a big, big difference. Okay, coming to the last few slides here. Um, more on the psychological side of our relationship with food. This was a fascinating study done in Cornell University whereby they did two elements to this study. The first one uh, is manifested well in the photo here, and it shows that there was a bowl of sweets uh, either left beside the worker or two meters away, and that the worker was inclined to eat 1.8 times, so nearly twice as much uh, sweets when the bowl was approximately placed, as in right beside them. Um, so so that's, that's interesting. But also what was interesting is that when they were approximately placed, like right beside them, they underestimated how many they'd eaten. And when they had to walk and go and get them, they overestimated. So, um, so this is worth bearing in mind. The other test that they did was actually in both scenarios, the box of sweets was approximately placed. But in one, in one scenario, um, the container was see-through. And in another scenario, uh, it wasn't see-through, so they couldn't see the sweets. And in fact, what happened was when it was see-through and you could see the sweets, um, participants tended to eat 2.2 times as many sweets. So what this really highlights to us is out of sight, out of mind. And this is important when you think about the types of food that you're bringing into your house. Um, so obviously, if you have uh, a very tempting food in your cupboard, you're much more likely to eat it and maybe even several as opposed to go to a local shop. Like sometimes when we're uncomfortable at home, we're actually unlikely to go to the local shop and, and get that. We're happy to make do with a bit of fruit or whatever else is there. Um, particularly if we're bringing the right foods into our house, it makes uh, eating poorly and uh, that much harder. And it helps to reinforce the habit of eating well. Now, the people who have done best with me that have had the specific goal of weight loss take extreme ownership um, of the process. So what does extreme ownership mean? Extreme ownership means that you have to acknowledge that when you put food in your mouth, that nobody else is putting that food in your mouth. You are the one that is responsible for that, that decision of the actual physical movement. It's all well and good to blame your colleagues, to blame somebody else that they stressed you out, and that's why you're doing this. 
it is much better to look at other means of stress management, whether it be developing assertiveness skills or working a little bit on mindfulness. All of these things can be researched very easily online and that can make you feel like you've got more ownership over those areas while not taking um, that feeling of lack uh, to, of those in those areas on food as a kind of a form of punishment or uh, because realistically we're, we're just punishing ourselves at the end of the day by by force feeding ourselves if we're if we tend to do that in reaction to stressful environments the second one is that um they people they, they're not waiting for the ideal time because the ideal time will never come for a weight loss journey so what do i mean by that and um, there'll always be a wedding coming up or there'll always be a family birthday or something like that so actually you need to take extreme ownership and think, okay, well, how can I be really good around these events? How can I be better at these events and still enjoy myself? A lot of this is to do with forward planning. Um, and the other one is, you know, I'm too busy to be looking after my, uh, my nutrition and exercise. And um, everyone has the same 24 hours in the day. And it's actually that we take ownership of where we allocate those, those 24 hours. Even if you're a very busy person and you go out a lot, say with uh, with um, work, etc., you can always look at the menu in advance. You can always find an error or two on a Sunday to to batch make a good meal and and store it away for during the week. Um, so this is what I mean by extreme ownership, and this really defines the people who are ready to go on a big weight loss journey. Um, and and uh, in, let's say see the value in the process being actually I it's not that I have to do this but it's that I I want to do this and I think that's really important and I hope that actually watching this presentation is going to be helpful uh, for you on this journey. So from me that is it. Um, happy happy onwards journey. And if you've got any follow up questions based on this video, don't hesitate to. Um, to get in touch with me. Ciao, ciao, folks.